Hello. Let's use uh, let's try one more example of using Newton's second law and free body diagrams together for problem solving. The situation that I have here, you're sliding down a rope ladder from a tree house and you're hurrying up. So um, you're going to be speeding up as you go down. You're speeding up at a rate of two meters per second each second. And that number, two meters per second each second, if I rewrite that, two meters per second for every one second, I want us to recognize that that's not a velocity that I'm sharing there. That is the acceleration. That's the rate of you changing velocity. So that would be your acceleration of two meters per second for each second, which we could also write more simply as two meters per second per second, two meters per second squared. You've got a mass of 65 kilograms, and I'm curious how much tension there is in that rope that you're sliding down as you slide. So I started, I made an interaction diagram. Uh, there's a tree house, a rope, a tree, there's you, there's the entire earth. Um, I drew some interactions between some other things, but I really wanna focus in on you. Now, if you were solving this problem entirely on your own, since the question says, how much tension is there in the rope? then your first thought might be to try to make the rope be the system of choice. And you can see here that I chose you as the system. And you might think, why not the rope? But if you tried that, if you go very far down that road of trying to analyze the rope, then you pretty quickly discover that you just don't have enough information to make that be useful. You don't know a mass of the rope. You don't know details about the interaction between the rope and the treehouse. <coughs> And it's just going to be uh, too difficult for you to actually get anywhere with it. And so you might start that and discover like, oh, well, that was a dead end. And we can just try something new. Let's try analyzing you. And so if we take a free body diagram for you, then we've got, there's a tension in the rope pulling up on you. And there is a gravitational force from Earth's gravitational field from the entire Earth pulling down on you. So I'm just going to draw, we've just got those two forces acting on you. You're not in contact with the tree at all. You're just on the rope. So I'll draw those two forces. The gravitational force from the earth is straight down. Gravitational force by earth on you. I'm just going to abbreviate it, shorten it like that instead of writing out all of those details. I also know that that gravitational force is equal to, uh, let's just assume that this tree house is here on Earth. I don't know of any trees on another planet. So we'll assume that your tree house is here on Earth where we know that the gravitational field is 9.8 Newtons for each kilogram. So to find the gravitational force, I can multiply 65 kilograms times the 9.8 Newtons for each kilogram. And that gives me a gravitational force of 637 Newtons. And then there is also a tension. The rope is pulling up on you. And if you're unsure about that, um, well, the rope above you is pulling up on you. Uh, ropes can only pull. The ropes aren't going to push. And imagine if you let go of the rope that you would accelerate down even more. So the rope is holding you back in a sense. Um, it's not holding you back all the way, but there is an upwards pull from that tension. And I don't know how much that tension is. That's the goal of my question, how much tension. Um, but I do know that the forces here need to be unbalanced because there's an acceleration. And since you're accelerating down, you're sliding down, getting faster means that you have to have a downwards acceleration. So the forces need to be unbalanced and we need a, a net force that's downwards to give us an acceleration downwards. And so I drew this tension arrow shorter than the gravitational force because I know that the upwards force needs to be smaller than the downwards force since these are the only two and my force needs to be unbalanced in the downwards direction so that I can speed up on the way down or you can speed up on the way down.
I didn't know an exact length to make this, so I just made it be obviously shorter. And let's say that you have decided that you want to make the positive direction be upwards. Um, most students, in my experience, initially at least, tend to feel like that's a more natural way of thinking. We'll solve it that way, and then we'll think about what if we had made a different choice. So looking at this diagram, the net force is the total combination of both of those. And so the net force with upwards being positive, I've got a positive upwards tension plus a negative gravitational force. The neg gravitational force is negative because it's downwards and we said up is positive. So the net force, the sum of all of the forces is equal to positive tension plus negative gravitational force or tension force minus gravitational force. And so I draw the diagram so that I can figure out what I need to know about the net force. And I need that because Newton's second law tells me that the sum of all the forces, the net force, is what's equal to the product of the mass and the acceleration of our system. So I need to take that information from the diagram. I made my interaction diagram so that I could make a good free body diagram, and I made a good free body diagram so I could correctly work out the net force. And working out the net force tells me what to do on the left side of Newton's second law. So I've got a tension force minus gravitational force equals the mass of our system, which is u, times the acceleration of u. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so now I can take a look at what I know here and um, what I can solve for. I'm trying to solve for the tension. So if this is going to solve it for me, then I'll need to know all of these other numbers, and I do. So I have an unknown tension force minus, we already know that the gravitational force is 637 newtons, equal to the mass of 65 kilograms times your acceleration. And we need to pause and think for a moment about this acceleration. I wrote up here at the top, two meters per second each second means two meters per second squared is the acceleration. That's not a velocity, that is an acceleration. But then later on, we added this additional information that the upwards direction is positive. Now you are accelerating down. You're accelerating in the downwards direction and that's the negative direction. And so your acceleration because of this choice to make upwards be the positive direction, you have a downwards acceleration. That's a negative number. And so the net force on you, mass times acceleration, 65 kilograms times negative two meters per second per second is 130 newtons negative 130 newtons. Another way that we could think about that negative sign is that we know, looking back at the diagram, that we have to have more downward force than upward force here. Um, our net force has to be directed downwards. We have to have a net force that's in the negative direction because the positive direction is upwards. Our net force has to be downwards, which we've defined has to be negative. So I have to have a negative net force there with a negative acceleration. So now I'm able to solve this. I just need to, to get the tension force all alone uh, to solve for the tension. I just need to add the 637 newtons over to the other side. 637 newtons plus negative 130 newtons gives me a tension force of 507 newtons. So this tension in the rope is 507 newtons, and the question, how much tension is there in the rope, that question is answered. Great. Now, you might be thinking, hold on, I am not going to remember that negative sign there. I don't feel good about that. Like trying to remember to put that negative sign in for the acceleration because the positive direction is up and forgetting this negative sign, then I would get the wrong number here. I would calculate a wrong number. And that makes sense. And that's okay. We can look at it this way. We can look at it another way. And my personal choice, if I were solving it for myself, 
I usually like to make the positive direction be whichever direction some object is accelerating. So maybe I would say the positive direction is going to be straight down. And if I do that, I have the exact same diagram. I'm just going to draw it quickly more sloppily here. I've still got this downward gravitational force and this upward tension force, except that now when I rewrite this net force equation, now, because I'm making positive downwards, now this gravitational force is positive and this tension force is negative. So now my net force is positive gravitational force plus negative tension force, and the acceleration is gonna be positive two meters per second per second. And so basically by making this choice to switch the sign, I'm just reversing the signs of all of these different vectors. The acceleration vector is the opposite sign from the first time I solved it. The tension and gravitational forces both have opposite signs from the first time I solved it. And this is another equally good way to approach solving it. And this is actually my preferred way to approach solving it. So you should do whichever one feels good for you. And so the net force now, gravitational force minus tension force, is equal to mass times acceleration except now I've got positive 637 newtons minus a tension force equals positive 130 newtons. And so now if I wanted to solve this for the tension force, well, I've got a negative tension force here. So if I just add that over to the other side and then subtract the 130 from both sides, then I've got 637 newtons minus 130 newtons equals the tension force. And then subtracting those, then I calculate a tension force of 507 newtons. And I get the exact same number here as I got up above. I'm getting the exact same solution. It's a 507 newton tension force, whichever way I solve it. So they're both equally valid. Now, maybe the last thing I want to address here is that you might be wondering, wait a minute, isn't that tension force supposed to be negative? Why didn't I calculate a negative number there? And you're right. It is a negative, but we already took that into account up here at the top. We already factored in that it's a negative force because it's upwards. And so here we're just calculating what's the amount of that negative force. And we get the same answer either way. Both are equally good. And you should do whichever one works out best for you. And the only way to do that is to practice. Thanks for visiting. See you later.